dad, Papa Paul sent me something about Mahomes. And I thought it was an interesting stat. And you were just talking about Andy Reid a moment ago for you. It was a couple days. Um, but there was a stat that I wanted to get to before the cliffhanger of the episode. Ha oh, sh- <laughs> <laughs> okay, ha! So, interesting stat. The average length of Mahomes T D passes. Oh, I 2019 seen that. to 2022. You saw this? It's like four yards. So in 2019, <laughs> his average air yards was 17.3 per touchdown. In 2020, oh, wow. 13 air yards per touchdown. In 2021, 8.5 air yards per touchdown. In 2022, 4.5. He's getting closer. Last year, he threw 41 TDs. Only one traveled longer than 19 yards. Boy, isn't that interesting. Because you look at Kansas City, and Kansas City is saying, we need wide receivers that can abuse that short (laughs) yardage. And then you watch Buffalo, who you could make, like, you see Josh take the snap. Back, back, back. It's like... When you got that super blitz and Tecmo Super Bowl, and your quarterback, would you just keep drifting your quarterback back? <laughs> not everybody had Bo Jackson on that team. No, not everybody had Bo Jackson. And I think it, it, it speaks to the genius of Reed. Like, I'm, he's, he knew what he had in his defense. I mean, listen, I could score in three plays if I have to. But then my defense is gassed by the end of the game when I need right. it. Let me try right. to put together a few more drafts. Plus, the fact is that they didn't have Hill. I mean, you could say, you can make an argument, well, you had Hill for the previous season prior to that. Yeah, and it was but, declining. Like, yeah, significantly declining. Well, I think he knew that, you know, in order to protect my defense, I need to hold on to the ball a little bit more. Even though Spagnolo is is in him in him in himself a genius mm-hmm. in many wow. ways. They, they knew they had to hang out to the ball. That's what great play, play callers do. Like, listen, you know, we got to go into this game. We can't get in a shootout because our defense is going to be all over the place. We need to relax. Well, and Travis Kelsey became a more and more potential threat in the offense as the years have progressed. Like, from a fantasy yeah. value perspective, I heard this stat. I thought it was really wild. So, from a fantasy value perspective, the difference between drafting Travis Kelsey as the first head on off the board and draft and versus the fantasy value of the second tight end off the board is the exact same as the second tight end off the board versus the 20th. That's the difference in production. Jeez. So if you don't have Travis Kelsey from a fantasy football perspective, you're drafting a replacement level player, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right? So TJ Hawkinson was like the second efficient tight end and from a fantasy value Jeez. perspective. I never would have thought that. But that's the difference in disparity. And as Travis Kelsey gets more involved, it's no shock that the touchdowns, the yeah, yardage would, got short. would go down. Yeah, but then you, I mean, they replaced Tyreek with Juju. I mean, obviously. Totally different skill set. Yeah, totally different. So I guess this leads me to my question. Is it a trend or is it an anomaly? Because you see trends in the NFL develop all the time. Is this a trend? Because, like, you look at Kair Elam's stats, like defensive stats, he averaged almost, what was it, nine yards, average depth of target. Yeah. Like, that's because Buffalo plays off on everybody. Plays off, yeah. Right. You can't do that against a team that's averaging 4.5 yards per touchdown. No. Right? Because you got to bring, they're bringing, they're bringing that yardstick in. Like, you can't be back like that. Well, a lot of times you're waiting for the, I mean, it, where the Buffalo Bills are right now is that you're waiting for that home run ball mm-hmm. by Allen. And you're like, yeah. okay, we're going to prepare our team to prevent that. So what if a team completely gives up on that? Like, Mahomes can go 80 on any play. They sure can. And they can do anything they want. But then everyone was, like, prepared for that. And now you're sitting there going, okay, he doesn't have hell. This is going to bring defenses closer to the line. Okay, so we'll keep the ball longer. We don't care. Give me, uh, you know, we're losing Hill. Give me Isaiah Pacheco. Heck, I'll give him Hill's number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have an explosive back out of the backfield that will help me con- control the clock, control the ball, mm-hmm. and that's what they're going to do. Does Dorsey follow suit? Does he say, listen, we lost some pieces on defense, even though we gained some pieces on defense. 
Well, anyway. I sit there and be like, okay, Josh, you're matured enough now. you got to be a little bit more patient. We're not going for home run balls all the time. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's the one thing that makes Allen as exciting of a player as he is. I think that's what blows him up so much in fans' eyes because everyone remembers those highlight reel plays. Absolutely. Yeah, whereas Joe Burrow just – He's a surgeon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he's seen one a few times. Thanks, Bobby Hart. (laughs) Is Dorsey actually? I don't. I'm not worried about Allen's maturity. I'm worried about Dorsey's. And (laughs) yep. And look at and look at what they brought in in the offseason at the wide receiver position. They brought in Trent Sherfield, pure speed guys. Pure speed, with exception to Justin Shorter, who is scary looking. Like, I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. He's a scary looking individual. He, I bet y'all forgot about him, didn't you? <laughs> Since the draft. Yeah. With with the most ironic name that you could give a, uh, a receiver like him. Yeah, it's. But they brought in a bunch of speed guys. And I think that's something that Buffalo's offense has lacked the last two years is the ability. And I mean, you try and generate it with. You know, like, remember, they tried to use Andre Roberts, Isaiah McKenzie. Yeah. These these guys are very fast, but they're very limited. And here they bring in two guys that are just pure speed guys. You say, all right, let's 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 see if we can compete, right? you got to have the tool in your toolbox. you got to be able to use it. And like with Kansas City, I don't think they've become a more balanced team. They were – to me, not very fun to watch last year. No. You remember because New England three, for all those years? Three-yard pass, four-yard yes. pass. Three-yard pass, four-yard. Yeah, it was, oh, God, watching New England with Brady. Uh, they'd go out and win a game which 17, is, to, 17 to 6. But Kansas City doesn't have that defense, Mark. But that was one of the things that we saw Patrick Mahomes do. I mean, we saw Patrick Mahomes the second year in the league throw 50 touchdowns. Now, last year, we saw the precision and patience out of him that Reed wanted because they didn't have that deep ball, that deep ball threat. Right. You know, it, so he was more patient, and he was more efficient. No. Donovan McNabb would have thrown 40 touchdowns in that offense last you think year. so? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they spread people so thin. They do some, they put out some weird looks. You know, yeah. Like, they're a very unique team to prepare for. Oh, yeah. And that's that's what they do. I mean, that's the, that's the key to the offensive play calling is that you run the same plays that you always run, but just out of, like, six or seven different formations. And that's what confuses everybody. So, <clears throat> that's what elevated Mahomes to where he's at right now. Can the Buffalo Bills, and that and this was what's, what's, what's become a Bills Chiefs episode, um, they're they're a team that like it's like when you have a really really good sound technical boxer, mm-hmm. you know, versus a guy that just throws haymakers all day. Mm-hmm. The Buffalo Bills were that guy that just threw haymakers all yeah. day, and then the Kansas City Chiefs were a precision machine. And then every once in a while, sometimes that guy who's the precision machine, you know, lets a, lets a punch through, gets knocked out. Regular season the last two years. The Bills have been able to throw a haymaker and hit them. And haymakers don't connect in the playoffs usually. Mm-hmm. Um, no. But that being said, Josh Allen coming into the season, I think – People are going to get on him if he, if he starts throwing for 250 and they win. If he throws for like two, 235, two touchdowns, no no rushing touchdowns, no picks. But that has to be the maturity of him going into the season. I yep. The yeah. way that Mahomes did it. I mean, Mahomes threw for crap ton of yards last year too. So I guess, I guess it's not linear, but. Well, and, and Buffalo has made some changes, right? You've got a more diverse running back room now with multiple skill sets of players. Don't know how that's going to shake out yet. But there's and, – and they've made their wide receiver room, again, similar, more dynamic. And the tight end position you've made more dynamic. Yes. Like all these things you've done to try and give your play caller the ability to do anything that they want. And the, to me, and I you said it earlier – 
does Dorsey know what to do with that? And you look at the offensive minds on the staff, and they had a lot of off formal offensive coordinators on staff with Dorsey. Uh-huh. I don't know if any of them are at the creative level that you would need to push Dorsey into new depths. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you understand what I mean when I yes. say that? Yes. You had he, Mike he, Shula, you had uh, Brady, Joe Brady. Like, you gave him guys with experience. Well, it opens up, the, the toys that they gave them opens up options. Uh, but the problem is with the rosters, you, you can't you really keep all of them. You're no. not going to have nine wideouts on the team. You know what I mean? Nope. It's going to be like that scene in the, the Dark Knight where the Joker breaks the pool cue in half and goes, make it quick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be some receivers that they acquired that they're not going to have anymore. You know, it, it's going to be tough. But. Same with running backs. Latavius Murray. He, I don't see Latavius Murray making this team. Oh, he's a, he was a great vet pickup, though. Hey, 25, plus 2,500 touches. He is. He's up there. But you're not asking him to be a bell cow. You know what I mean? You could you could have those guys as spellbacks if you want. That's, that's not a problem. Because they're not paying him top dollar. Oh, no. No. They sure aren't. Um... Speaking of guys going to get cut, 